Okay. Uh, Matei, uh, hi, Matei. Uh, there are zero visitors at the moment, so let's uh, wait for a minute or two. Uh, I hope that uh, there will be some people joining. No. So before we start, how do you how do you feel? Uh, uh, so uh, we had similar session or, or practically the same session uh, three weeks ago, but in our language, in Croatian. Yes. Serbian. And now I also hope that uh, we will have a possibility to provide some insights about uh, the topic and that people and visitors on uh, today's session will be able to uh, to get something new and they will have also possibility to implement this in their environment or at least follow some best practices from there right absolutely and the point of organizing this session in english uh is that as we are as uh, we are having uh, a community which is growing and that community is having more and more uh, uh, people and uh, some of them are not uh, uh, speaking um, our language and uh, that's why we are organizing English speaking sessions okay we are having visitors joining mm -hmm. so uh, good evening everybody uh, we are uh, having a meetup today with Mate Maček. This is a meetup organized by AWS Community Bosnia together with AWS Community Montenegro. As I said, Mate Maček is AWS uh, solution architect and he's going to present us uh, the uh, presentation uh, today. And uh, I guess uh, we should start. Uh, Oh, what do you what do you think, Mate? Yeah, Can yeah. So let, yeah, yeah. Let, let's start with the presentation. So hello yeah. everyone. My name is Mate, solution architect at, at AWS uh, uh, team in the manufacturing team. So covering customers in manufacturing area. I'm based in Munich. Uh, originally coming from Croatia. I have been with uh, AWS for nine months now. And uh, just to, to explain you more about my role, so what we as solution architects uh, uh, we are doing. So uh, we are acting as a customer guide, navigating uh, our customers through our services, sharing uh, insights and offering consultations to ensure they can architect and uh, build solutions optimally. Uh, I started uh, like a database administrator, but during my career, I experienced many challenges like uh, team lead, but also technical lead, leading multiple teams. Uh, coming from technical uh, background, 10 years in IT, including uh, four years dedicated to assisting uh, various companies in migrating workloads uh, to AWS. So from today, uh, from today's uh, presentation, um, you should um, imagine that, uh, for example, you have uh, agility to scale your AWS infra infrastructure effortlessly um, and uh, everything. Uh, and, and on top of that, uh, you have possibility to ensure your organization remains on the right side of complex compliance uh, requirements. So uh, we will dive into this today and you will see how you can practically follow best practices and assure um, uh, industry regulation is Im are implemented inside your environment. Okay, so let's kick off uh, with the presentation and start with the with the slides. So this what we can see uh, today is that organization uh, organizations are commonly looking for prescriptive guidance to ensure their workloads are uh, following architectural best practices, and uh, now more than ever, uh, it's imperative that organizations. Uh, have strong foundational architectures that are high performing, secure, reliable, cost efficient, and sustainable. Uh, so, as we can see that uh, in 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 today's uh, in, um, in in today's world, we have um, in, in increased com complex digital landscapes. Um, organizations are recognizing the need for robust foundations that will enable them to unlock the full potential of, of their uh, computing environments. AWS is here to offer products 
services and resources for organizations looking to adapt uh, to organizational best practices, which means that this includes like AWS well architected, AWS solutions, and the AWS architecture um, uh, center. Uh, which features things like reference architectures and content on, on hot tops, uh, topics like uh, how to architect sustainably. Uh, the point of all guidance uh, is to help customers build a secure foundation that meets uh, your control requirements so you host uh, your highly regulated uh, workloads. On this slide, uh, you can see the list of common uh, compliance requirements and you can notice that uh, some of them fall into the common uh, strategies, like such as uh, incident uh, response or networking or disaster recovery. So uh, we can say that these are uh, like basic things uh, required in compliance scenarios, but generally uh, they, um, uh, they take some time and effort to work through and complete correctly to meet the compliance uh, requirements. This is where uh, a strong foundational structure comes in and it uses infrastructure as code to ensure that all accounts in the environment uh, can meet customers' uh, compliance requirements. And during the today's presentation and at the end of the uh, presentation, you will see how uh, practically uh, this can be implemented and how you can implement this precisely. Here you can see also what AWS is uh, uh, offering to our to our customers and uh, what AWS has in portfolio. So uh, this is what we can see that uh, customers, uh, they need better visibility to integrate their cloud operations into their current workloads while maintaining uh, high security standards and open operational efficiency. And because of that, AWS is offering various services ac across the spectrum. And uh, this includes like identity and access management, uh, infrastructure protection, data protection, and also others. And uh, the goal is to help our customers uh, fulfill uh, their requirements. Now we will see um, what is the uh, how our customers are practically starting uh, with AWS journey? So uh, usually we can see that uh, customers are starting with one VPC and they use IAM roles to manage access uh, to various applications. But uh, when you have only a few workloads, which belongs to a few teams, this is of course manageable. But however, over the time you are adding more and more applications. And as you have more workloads, uh, which are belonging to more teams, it, it becomes uh, harder to isolate your workloads. And then uh, some question uh, start to arise, like how you can uh, prevent access for uh, orange team to, to see uh, applica uh, blue application, or for example, how you can allocate workloads to, to team or cost center. But beside that, uh, uh, customers are experiencing problems with uh, IP address uh, limitations. Uh, they're hitting API or service limits, or uh, for them it's difficult to understand, understand uh, billing separation. As I already mentioned, uh, when customers are dealing with, all, uh, with only one account where they're placing uh, all their workload, they're facing many challenges. As, as, as a company is growing as a, a, and as uh, products are exponentially growing, uh, many teams would like to have separated workloads and they would like to have isolation of their services. Beside that, uh, they would like to have uh, security um, uh, controls, they would like to have compliance controls uh, on specific uh, workload and they would also like to have separation of different business processes, which means that they would like to separate different stages. They would like to separate uh, 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 different type of workloads. And also for them, it's difficult uh, to, to, to properly manage billing for their uh, application. And this is what we see. Uh, our customers really expect to have isolation of their workloads and they expect that they have some uh, security boundaries and also they would like to have their, uh, their resources uh, placed in like separated box and 
they can achieve it. Uh, th th they can achieve this with is isolated AWS account. As already mentioned during the previous slide, so uh, whenever uh, our customers are uh, starting with one account and when uh, workload is growing, they're asking themselves how to how to build a secure foundation, how they can configure, manage uh, AWS services together, and also how they can reduce uh, management uh, burden. So for this, uh, uh, we from AWS and uh, collecting feedback from our customer, uh, customers, uh, we uh, we are offering possibility that our customers start with the landing zone. So uh, landing zone is uh, AWS environment with multiple accounts, and uh, these accounts are configured in a way to allow multiple people and teams uh, across your organization uh, to start uh, with with the use of AWS services in a secure and scalable uh, manner. Uh, landing zone is allowing you to experiment, to iterate and migrate workloads uh, into, uh, into without uh, having to worry about scalability or security concerns uh, as your cloud uh, footprint uh, grows. We can see here now, uh, we will see now uh, capability of landing zone. So what exactly landing zone is bringing to us? We can see there uh, uh, we are bringing uh, with landing zone possibility uh, and help uh, with the man ma managing of the codes by separating billing for different teams uh, or projects. There is also possibility uh, for, for uh, different teams to ensure that their uh, resources uh, are not related with, with each other. Also, you have possibility uh, to allow quick adoption of the AWS environment for, cha for, uh, for changing uh, needs. And also this is what is important when you have a security regulated environment. Uh, it's possible with landing zone to control user access and permission efficiently. At the end, it's important to mention here uh, that landing zone is providing you possibility uh, to implement automated security checks and also monitor uh, for uh, resource uh, protection. In the follow, so now when we are aware about uh, what exactly is landing zone and how landing zone can help to to customers uh, to to deal with the challenges uh, when they have everything in the one. Uh, in the one account. Now we will see uh, what AWS services are here to help you to really implement a landing zone. One of the most important services, uh, there is definitely AWS organization. So uh, with this service, it's possible to separate workloads. Uh, it's possible to also place different accounts in different organizational units. Uh, you have possibility to apply different security control uh, service control por policies uh, on them. And uh, this is just helping you to addition additionally protect overall environment and to fulfill industry uh, requirements. It's also important to mention uh, that uh, AWS uh, organization is offering possibility that you integrate other AWS services and from the central place and central point of view, you have possibility to have in your environment services like guard duty, firewall manager, backup or IAM identity uh, center. I mentioned uh, that with AWS organization, you have possibility to uh, uh, to control um, and, and place different policies with organizational units. So um, let's say, so this is an example, and let's say that a uh, left organizational unit, uh, in left organizational unit, you will place accounts which belongs to, uh, to test stage, which means that you will have their accounts which belongs to, uh, to test environment. And on the right side, you have accounts, and this is an organization uh, unit dedicated just for production uh, accounts and production workload. Uh, like this, you will have possibility uh, to, to place uh, different control uh, controls to, to different organizational units. So for example, uh, to, to organizational unit where you have test, uh, test environment and test workload, you have possibility uh, to limit, um, to limit uh, users that they create EC2 instances 
uh, which are larger uh, EC2 instance types, which are larger than X large, for example, which will prevent, which will which will save you some money and prevent that anyone is creating something which is not necessary for test environment. This is of course just example. But you know, on production, uh, to better control your environment, you have possibility to create uh, policy which will block. RDS instance uh, uh, to be created uh, publicly available, which means like this, you will you will be able to follow uh, best practices. Another service uh, on top of AWS organization, uh, which is important in building of landing zone is, uh, is AWS control tower. So practically AWS control tower is the service who is creating your landing zone. And uh, with, uh, with this, you have possibility to follow best practices. And um, uh, this service is uh, giving us and providing us possibility uh, to, uh, to place governance control with different uh, guard lists, uh, guardrails. Um, so Control Tower is practically collecting logs from AWS accounts in your environment, uh, but also uh, reuse different rules which are available in AWS config. And they are then placed, uh, these controls are placed to all accounts in your, envi in, in your environment. Beside that, uh, AWS Control Tower is offering uh, different uh, features. And one of them is possibility that you uh, deny uh, regions and also that you prevent creation of resources in undesired regions, but also it's possible to control data residency, which is important for any institution, institu institution uh, that should follow different regulations, like for example, GDPR or where data must stay in European Union. So uh, this, this is for example, applicable for, for companies in financial sector, and uh, there you have a strict requirement that data stay just in your country and with control tower and with uh, uh, features uh, of control tower, you have possibility to assure that in your environment, you are developing resources just in specific uh, region. Control Tower, uh, uh, as I mentioned, Control Tower is assuring that you follow best practices, placing controls to your accounts or to your organizational units. Um, there are uh, three different types of controls, preventive, detective, and proactive, but I will here mention only two of them. So uh, preventive controls are designed to prevent uh, specific activities or access to specific resources, which means that they need to be always compliant. There is no possibility that you do not have uh, them in compliant uh, state. And on another half, on the, on the other hand, you have detective controls, uh, which are focused on detecting unwanted events or violation after they have already occurred. And there, there you have possibility to see uh, compliant and non-compliant state. For example, if you want to have, like I mentioned, RDS instances uh, which are not created publicly, uh, you have possibility to see um, uh, their status and you have possibility to see where they are created as expected and where you have, and also you have possibility to see where they are not created as expected. Here you can see example of controls uh, that are possible to be created uh, and implemented by Control Tower. So like example, uh, you have possibility to enforce um, MFA multi-factor authentication uh, to be applied for your root user, which by the way, will be from the, from the next year, from the mid of next year um, by default uh, con uh, uh, enforce control. There is also possibility that you enforce from the uh, from the from the centralized point with control tower controls possibility that uh, all S3 buckets in your environment are created uh, with versioning enabled. Of course, there are also other examples, but I will mention here only two. Another thing which is important for us uh, uh, beside AWS organization and uh, control tower when we are dealing with landing zone is how exactly we will manage uh, identities. Identities, of course, are important and we would like to, to have possibility to, to secure them uh, properly and have possibility to uh, centralize this. For this, we have IAM Identity Center, which is enabling us exactly this.
Here on this example, uh, you can see uh, how uh, users here is mentioned how administrator of the of the of the system uh, is accessing two accounts when uh, when uh, in the environment is not implemented uh, landing zone and when uh, they are not using IAM identity center. So administrator user is using root user to connect to other accounts and action like this should be prohibited and should not be allowed to to be used in 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 production i mean in any in, in any account root user should be really used just in some specific cases and uh, should be adequately uh, protected when you have i am identity center uh, then you are going you are accessing to your uh, accounts uh, to uh to through to centralize portal and like this you have also possibility to uh to access to your accounts with admin access but also with access which is necessary um for other users to have to specific account so what exactly is i am identity center and why uh, what exactly i am identity center is offering uh, to our customers with IAM Identity Center, you have possibility uh, to bring your Active Directory, integrate with your Active Directory with uh, IAM Identity Center, or you can create new Active Directory using AWS uh, service. Beside that, you have possibility to, uh, to integrate with external identity providers. And like this, you will have a centralized place of your all identities and you will have possibility to to manage them from the center place and like this you will be able to access to multiple accounts in your uh, environment and also uh, assign these to to different um, applications now i will provide you example uh, how i am identity uh, center is working and uh, how uh, users are using i am identity center so imagine now that you have uh, a few users in your environment and they should be they should be part of of uh, some groups you should always place users to, to to groups to follow best practices and then these groups uh, will have access to specific um, accounts after after you have uh, after you have assigned um, groups to specific accounts you are assigning their permission sets and permission sets are giving you possibility uh, that you attach specific uh, policies or permission uh, to your uh, groups and like this uh, users will have sp uh, specific rights uh, when they are accessing to uh, specific accounts which means that if you are admin and if you would like to use admin access then you will be able to see everything in the account but if you if you have some developers which are working um, I don't know with just with EC2, let's say just like example with EC2 instances or just with RDS instances, or like you have database administrator, uh, then you will be able to grant the access just for RDS uh, instances. And then database administrator will, will be able to see in this specific account just our RDS instances, and they will be able to um, to manipulate and play just uh, just with them. Also, there is possibility that you, for example, give them uh, read only read only access if this is necessary in your environment. But also, this is not the only case. There is possibility to do uh, to limit uh, whatever is necessary per your company policies. Okay. So uh, now uh, that we have seen the, the basic services uh, that help us define the landing zone, uh, le let us explore uh, what we need to establish an environment that is ready and compliant with various industry standards. So I need to mention that since uh, compliance is a uh, complex and robust topic, topic uh, we will only cover today a small portion of the possible implementation, but I think that th this will give you uh, an idea of how to, to get started there. So uh, whenever you are dealing with multiple AWS accounts, uh, it's crucial to establish various standards. And I will call them now uh, on my way. Uh, this is not available uh, in official documentation, but one of the most uh, important standards are documentation and orchestration. So let me explain uh, both of, of these uh, standards. So uh, with documentation, uh, you have possibility uh, to set standards such as inventory management, 
backup strategy, uh, patching strategy for different systems like for Linux or data, uh, in different databases. You have possibility to define disaster recovery strategy and more. And like this, your internal customers will be able to have clear understanding of what to expect from your services. And on top of that, uh, documentation will be valu valuable for you uh, while you are onboarding, for example, new members, but also, which is most important when you are dealing with um, in, uh, regulated uh, regulated uh, with company which is uh, industry regulated uh, you will have various assessments and documentation uh, will be ready for you and you will be able to fast provide this to your auditors another thing which i mentioned another standard which i mentioned is orchestration and i uh, and this is something which is really core process uh, that enables faster and consistent resource uh, management which means that with this, you have possibility to apply appropriate tags, policies, and standard to resources. And like this, you have possibility to generate different reports. You have possibility to automatically um, onboard resources to backup strategy, uh, send metrics to monitoring systems, and you are able to ensure that uh, the expected configuration um, is always uh, in place. For any company, it's crucial to maintain compliance and AWS is here to provide various services uh, to, a hel to help achieve this. Now I will show you one of the most important services uh, uh, where you will be able to see example how exactly AWS is helping uh, with it. So as da data backup is crucial for every company, especially for those that need to comply with various regulations. Uh, I, will, I, will, I will go now through, through this example and I will show you how AWS uh, service or AWS backup, backup is helping you to achieve uh, this with the use of managed uh, services. So um, AWS backup uh, is when you, when, when, you have, um, when you have environment with multiple accounts, it's possible to integrate with AWS organization. And like this, you're allowing to scale the, the service and apply policies to accounts in your environment, which means that you have central place. And then from there, you are able to control backup in, in all accounts in, in, in your un, uh, environment. You are doing this in administrator account and there you are defining different uh, backup plans and you're attaching them to specific organizational unit. Uh, this means that um, when you, when, uh, when, uh, what I meant with uh, different backup plans, for example, for test stage, you would like to have retention, uh, backup retention like seven days, but for production, you would like to have, I don't know, one year retention. And with defining different backup plans and attaching them to different organizational unit, you can achieve this from the, from the central place. There is also possibility that you enable encryption and also in case you need to, uh, to be ready for disaster recovery, you should enable cross-region replication. And everything which I mentioned will be automatically uh, done for you. Of course, you need to in advance to prepare everything, but after that, uh, you will have uh, this uh, managed by AWS service. In this example, which I'm providing to you, um, if you want to include some resource in the strategy, uh, you should use a specific tag uh, that triggers this corresponding backup plan based uh, what you defined previously. To give you some example, uh, in case you have um, RDS instance or EC2 instance that should be part of the strategy, you should assign there the respective tag. Uh, and after that, uh, you will, you will, uh, AWS backup it will automatically uh, detect, uh, detect this and it will include to the strategy and uh, respective retention period uh, will be applied there. Which means that with the, following this approach um, uh, can be really highly uh, beneficial during various assessments. This is also, for example, like, uh, like, like documentation. And when you have environment like this, uh, there is no longer that you need to spend countless hours managing your backup strategy. 
logs are easily accessible, your services backups are centralized, and the service allows you to focus more on operational tasks and optimizing your overall um, architecture. Just to provide you some example from my uh, previous experience, uh, when I was, uh, so I worked like a um, like, uh, system uh, administrator responsible for the, uh, for the complete uh, PCI DSS uh, system. And for us was required that we every day um, store our backup to, to, uh, to tapes. We had back, backup library for, for this. Uh, to really start with this, uh, we needed to, to create backup, to, either to configure backup library, uh, configure tapes, uh, plans, and so on. And then every day, uh after during the day um we needed to to replace these tapes we move them from the backup libraries and then we we needed to also uh, write the documentation about it and we also needed to store them in a bank and like this every day every day repeatedly every day and now with aws backup uh, there is no need that you do that anymore because everything is done uh, for you automatically and also which is important to mention when i had uh, in on-prem world um, assessments with auditors i spent like mm, at least three weeks uh, to prepare uh, documentation and to have ready logs for our auditors and now with aws backup there is no need that i have this uh, that i have uh, that i'm struggling with this i just need to extract logs documentation is already ready and i just need to provide them uh, possibility that they, they access to aws backup if needed and i'm uh, uh, ready uh, with the uh, uh, with the assessment Okay, so uh, now that we have seen one example of how to balance an environment with multiple accounts, uh, it's important to demonstrate how this balancing can be achieved for the entire environment you are responsible for. So uh, the simple answer is the automation, automa automation of the entire uh, environment. So we can use, we can call this uh, orchestration. Uh, to accomplish this, it's important that the access to AWS Management Console uh, should be restricted only through IAM Identity Center, where the maximum permission granted uh, to customers is uh, read-only. Like this, you will assure that resource management becomes uh, controlled. So uh, like this also, each uh, specific AWS account will have uh, configured baseline and you can for this follow CSI hardening and also AWS best practices which will uh, give you uh, a good starting uh, point point so uh, like this you have possibility that your configuration with this baseline is uh, fully automated and whenever you are creating new account you will you will use this as initial uh, as initial as initial um, account setup and all accounts will share the same uh, base configuration this means that for example if you would like to have backup vault um, in your new accounts you will be able uh, to connect with the with the predefined backup policies you will be able to um, uh, to uh, to change the default setting of EBS encryption uh, to be always uh, enforced. Uh, you will be able, for example, to create various CloudWatch uh, alarms in advance, uh, or you will be able to implement uh, VPC flow logs that uh, that later you will be uh, you will be able to centralize them and help network team to to uh, uh, to troubleshoot during the during the sum problem. Also, as visible on the picture, it's important that each AWS account uh, should have a corresponding uh, Git repository. So uh, Git repositories, which are involved in the process, uh, also must follow uh, defined standards. And uh, this includes a webhook to trigger a pipeline. Uh, and you should have there like a protected branch with approval uh, requirements and a restricted group responsible for merging uh, pull requests. So all resources created in AWS account uh, should really follow this process because if you are not following this process, uh, you can have uh, you can have a mess. So um, it's important to mention that uh, this is really crucial uh, because like this you are enabling compliance with defining uh, defined naming conventions and tech policies, and you are uh, allowing everyone to provision resources according to set standards, and. Uh, 
this process will allow uh, you for additional. Uh, so if you have this implemented in your environment, uh, this process is also capable to um, to allow you to to have analysis of created resources and also you have possibility to calculate the cost and also like this you can prevent unnecessary security vulnerabilities and unwanted uh, expenses so the goal of this solution is to provide flexibility to customers and offer them the abil uh, ability to create their own modules while still following established uh, standards Here I mentioned uh, the uh, so here I mentioned in case some companies uh, should have a ticket system for any particular uh, change, and they would like to see this in their environment. They will ha they have also a possibility that they integrate their ticket ticketing system and create a ticket uh, ticket automatically through the process. Or even better, if uh, ticketing system system is capable to do that, they are able to fully automate uh, some requests like. Um, creation of C name and placing them to respective root 53 hosted zone. And after uh, this process finish, uh, then you are starting deployment and your resources will be uh, provisioned in respective account. And at the end of the process, of course, for you is important that you monitor your environment and that you prevent problems before they arise. I know that this sounds a little bit uh, complicated and because of that now I will provide you example just that you have possibility to think about it and that you understand uh, what is the goal to, to be achieved there. So uh, to addre address this properly, let's imagine that we are engineers. So this engineer can be, this doesn't mean that uh, this engineer should be cloud engineer or SRE engineer. It can be data engineer, dat database engineer, network engineer, any engineer who would like to have um, any resource modified or created inside AWS environment. And imagine that you are this engineer and you would like to have their EC2 instance and you, you would like to also create some additional uh, resources with it. As I mentioned, uh, each uh, AWS account uh, should have corresponding GitHub repository, and then you will choose a uh, corresponding uh, Git repository and you will be able to create their feature branch. After you are working with this feature branch with infrastructure as code, uh, and after you prepare the code, en engineer will be able to, to open pull request to protect the branch, and like this, a uh, webhook, uh, webhook uh, will trigger the pipeline. After that, engineer will be able to see uh, like the output, uh, what exactly will happen with, with this request. So this means that uh, he will be able to see output of security scanner, which means that uh, he will be able to see if he created security groups, which is allowing traffic to every, every everywhere, EC2 instances, which are located, for example, in public subnet, SNS without encryption, KMS key without temptation. And if you are if you don't want to allow this in your company, you are able to block such a request. And then if you are blocking such a request, engineer will, will need to repair, repair this change. And after engineer repair this change, he will be able to move forward and request the merge. And also in the output, uh, engineer will be able to see what will be the cost of this, uh, of this uh, change. And after, after he, uh, he requests the merge, responsible members will receive notifications via email or some communication channel. And then a responsible member will be able to approve this and development, uh, deployment will start. In case you don't want to have uh, manual approval, for example, this should be valid for PCI DSS environment, but in case you would like to have automated approval, you have also possibility uh, to create this. And in case you don't have any suspected activities or detected vulnerabilities, then you can automatically approve the change and the process can, uh, pipeline can automatically start and implement desired resources uh, for the engineer. Like this, 
you have uh, additional uh, cloud engineers in your company which are helping you to achieve the the goals and also they are able to create uh, their environment without practically contacting you and they can be responsible for for their part of code but of course in case they don't they are not aware about uh, infrastructure as code you are here to guide them and, and onboard them uh, to the process now this what you see here this is example of po potential solution architect um so uh, so the uh, architecture and uh, you can see that here i mentioned aws services so uh, you have possibility to achieve with uh, cloud pipeline where you are using code commit and code build and when where you when you also able to use some third party uh, plugins if necessary you are storing your artifacts to s3 bucket and for approval you use help of sqs in combination with lambda and SNS. Okay, so uh, now that's it from the presentation, but at the end I would like to say that I prepared some materials for you, which I hope that will uh, will help you uh, to get started uh, with, the, with the landing zone and which also will be able to help you uh, to follow best practices in the landing zone. You can scan the QR code or you have possibility also to, to Google um, uh the the wording uh words uh which, which are mentioned here okay so that's it uh i would like also now at the end of presentation because uh, before we start with the with the question i would like to ask you to provide uh, the feedback so the feedback is uh, you need um, 30 seconds uh, to finish with this uh, feedback is important for us because it will give us possibility that we improve our presentation that we improve our uh, services and uh, we are uh, we like to receive uh, and listen uh, feedback from from our uh, customers so now we can start with the question uh, questions and i hope that i will be also able to to answer to to your questions Is there any questions? Okay, there is one. Uh, so the, the, this depends. Uh, so is it necessary for start a project or for or only for enterprises? So this what i mentioned here and this what i presented here depends on the on the workload you workload you have if you are starting with startup project which uh, which you don't need to follow any uh, regulations then of course you will not uh, create uh, such strictive uh, environment but if you are uh, if you start with the with the with the project where you are preparing uh, something for some uh, company which uh, which will need to follow some industry uh, re regulations, then it's advisable that you start with something similar. Okay. Uh, my, my addition to that uh, question, uh, do you pay anything when you have, let's say, uh, such a strict... Um, uh, environment do they do those services incur some additional cost and uh do you know approximately how will that be uh how much will that cost let's say a startup company that is willing to let's say have some uh rule to be bulletproof for future yeah okay so uh the limitation let me limitation will not cost you uh anything because you will uh, you will limit this with i am identity center which is free of charge and also you are doing this with um, with service control policies other uh, organizational units and so on which are also free of charge uh this this can all, only bring you the the benefits because like this you are pre you are preventing other uh other uh, members in your company that they create for example bitcoin farm and that you are not aware of it or that they create some um uh, instances uh, which they are not using or for example when you have some security incident you are able to immediately detect uh, which team is responsible and part of which application is this resource which means that 
uh, there is no additional cost. This just can um, prevent additional cost for you. And uh, cost for landing zone, there is some uh, cost for landing zone, but this is the cost related with, with logs you are creating there and with resources you are enabling there, like AWS uh, config and AWS con uh, Cloud Trail, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's see if there is more questions. I have copied. I couldn't paste this uh, uh, survey into the uh, chat. Uh -huh. I, I, will, I will do this. Yeah, I, 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 I copied. I hopefully it, it works. Um, I mean, I copied. I literally copied uh, letter by letter. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Here, one more question for from, from Uros. Uh, is it difficult to switch to an organization if it didn't have one? at the beginning and the project is already quite developed uh, okay this is a great question yeah so uh, so it depends of course what what services you have implemented but uh landing zone should not affect your uh, productive workload uh, which means that in case you want to implement landing zone you are just uh, creating uh, uh, another security layer on top of your already existing environment. So this will not affect your uh, your services, your products you created, but will, for example, limit you how you are accessing there, which means that you will not able anymore to use a root uh, user to access directly to accounts, but you will have your own user uh, and complete environment will be will follow some security uh, best practice. But it will not affect your uh, your solution you already have uh, created in your environment. So, um, I, for example, in my previous company, we had uh, multiple accounts, uh, and uh, we didn't have from the beginning uh, landing zone. And uh, after we are already um, implemented many applications there and products, we were able to enable landing zone there without any problem, just uh, uh, adding on top of everything additional security for our environment. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yep. Uh, uh, one more thing uh, from me. Let's say, um, first, uh, some clarity. Um, basically, a uh, landing zone is a concept and control tower is a service that is provided by AWS that implements the landing zone as a concept. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there are uh, uh, different types of landing zone, landing zones. Uh, there are, let's say, uh, some other vendors are, are uh, implementing uh, uh, yeah, landing zones. However, uh, only control tower is uh, integrated with uh, identity center directly uh, and can be implemented uh, basically, um, let's say, uh, aut in an automated way. Uh, however, uh, is uh, control tower right now, um, are you able to, to uh, let's say, uh, Enforce uh, cloud formation. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, control tower over cloud formation. Can you implement that as an infrastructure as a code? You can, but maybe you will not be able to uh, to create everything you would like to have there. Especially this, mm -hmm. what I mentioned here, is not possible. Everything to create uh, with mm -hmm. the code, mm -hmm. uh, but m m most of this, what I mentioned, which is related with AWS services is possible mm -hmm. to create especially with cloud formation okay okay yeah but of course documentation is not possible to be created but there yeah, is possibility course. that you create uh, cl uh, cloud formation but uh, it, it's easier i mean at the end because when you are starting with uh, landing zone you 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 are create you are usually creating this through the console because you are specifying some uh, some stuff there, and it's easier to 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 be created like this. And then on top of that, after that, you are building automation on all other accounts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um, as I remember previously, uh, uh, Control Tower uh, wasn't able to establish the 
uh, multi-regional governments, or it wasn't recommended. Is that the case still? You have possibility to so you have possibility to establish uh, multi-regions uh, controls, but you always have one home region. And then on yeah. top of that, you can you can add multiple regions, and mm -hmm. it's advisable really that if you have additional regions, that you define uh, them in uh, in uh, regions where you will really run some workloads. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I would like to thank you all of you. Thank you for being here. Uh, I hope that you had possibility to learn something new and that you will uh, be able to follow this in your company. In case you have some additional question, you are free to, to ask me. I also provided here my uh, contacts. Uh, you, can, you can find me also LinkedIn and I'm willing to help you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mate. Um, it was a great presentation. Uh, I think you. we had uh, like a few uh, viewers uh, in yep. one moment. Yep. So, yeah, I think it was great presentation and uh, I believe we learned a lot. So thank you very much and you. Uh, see you in some of the next sessions. Yeah, thank you. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.